Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Republican Reflections. The other day I posted a video detailing the Cloward Piven strategy and how that ties in to the crisis at the border. What I didn't tell you is that there's four stages to the Cloward Piven strategy and today we'll be discussing the first stage perception of crisis. Stage number one involves recognizing a perceived crisis or a social problem. Advocates of an open border and mass migration argue that there's a humanitarian crisis and an urgent need to provide assistance to individuals who are fleeing poverty, persecution, and other issues in their home countries. They emphasize the moral obligation to offer refuge and support to those in need. Now, if anyone has been watching or listening to KJP, the White House, or Secretary Mayorkas lately, then that sounds very familiar. Now, for all intents and purposes, since the White House keeps telling us that the border is closed and secure, well, for now, we'll just play along. If America were to open its borders and allow mass migration without vetting or verification and provide unconditional welfare benefits without any questions asked, the tie-in to the perception of crisis would be as follows. Now, let me uh, clarify. What do I mean by unconditional welfare benefits? Let's say someone just walked across the border and we handed them a cell phone and on that cell phone was an application called the CBP1 app. And all they had to do is register to appear in court at a later date somewhere in the near future, like 2027 or 2033. And until that time, they were automatically enrolled to receive benefits, no questions asked. The tie-in. The perception of a crisis in this context would be used to justify an open borders policy with the provision of unconditional welfare benefits without any questions asked. Advocates would argue that these measures are necessary to address the hardships faced by marginalized and disadvantaged groups seeking refuge and support. Let's talk about it. If this were to happen in our country, the United States of America, here's some of the negative impacts that the perception of this crisis could cause on our economy and other issues that could arise. Number one, strain on public resources. The sudden influx of migrants without vetting or verification could overwhelm public resources such as healthcare, housing, education, and social services. Well, we're already seeing some of these happen and it's only been a week since the end of Title 42. Number two, increased tax benefits. Do you remember that hotel I was telling you all about the other day? The one in New York where we have a contract in place to house migrants at the price of $190 per room per night through April of 2024? I digress. Increased tax burden. The cost of providing unconditional welfare benefits to a large number of migrants would result in higher taxes for American citizens. Reduced availability of services. Limited resources would lead to a reduced availability and quality of services for both migrants and existing citizens. Which one do you think is more important there? Number four, economic disruption. Mass migration without proper vetting may disrupt local labor markets, leading to increased competition for jobs and potentially lower wages for both migrants and existing workers. Hence why DeSantis implemented a new policy in which all employers in Florida have to abide by the E-Verify process. I guess you could say he saw this coming. Number five, security risks. Without thorough vetting, there may be an increased risk of individuals with criminal backgrounds or potential security threats entering the country. Hence why we've caught more than five people on the naughty list since the end of Title 42. Now, because we're all on TikTok and we enjoy watching shorter videos, I'm gonna run through the rest of these rather quickly. Number six, public backlash. Number seven, strain on our education system. Number eight, housing shortages. Number nine, cultural integration challenges. Number 10, language barriers. Number 11, healthcare uh, system strain. 
Number 12, wage compression. 13, social welfare fraud. 14, economic inequality. And number 15, economic instability. Folks, this is stage one of the Cloward Piven strategy, perception of crisis, and how it ties in to having an open border. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. I'll see you soon.